Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar from MBS on MBS Chorus Preliminaries. So this is a version of Chorus which comes just with the preliminaries content set. So ideal for quantity surveyors, project managers that have no need for the technical sections within MBS, but just want that prelims content. So today's presentation, first of all, We'll hear from Roland Finch, a technical author at MBS that looks after the premium sections. Uh, Roland is a fellow of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Then we'll have a, a live software demonstration from myself showing how that prelims content can be used in the MBS Chorus platform. And then finally, we'll go through some sort of next steps where you can find out more information and uh, see whether Chorus preliminaries is right for you. So over to you, Roland, uh, MBS preliminaries. Well, welcome to the, the first part of the uh, webinar where I'm going to talk to you today about preliminaries. Uh, preliminary, uh, it, uh, that's a dictionary definition. It's a Latin word. It means the things that go before. Uh, but the focus that we're, we're going to have today is, is on general conditions. Uh, the specification, so, so the specification of any project uh, comes in several parts, but the main parts are preliminaries and work sections. So but the important thing to remember here is that the preliminaries and the work sections go together to form a specification. Uh, and the purpose of the preliminaries part of it is to describe the, the uh, things which apply to the whole of the job. Uh, so whereas we have the work sections which may describe certain elements of the work, such as brickwork or block work or roofing or what have you, the preliminaries element describes those things which apply to the whole of the jobs, particularly things like which contract are we going to use and where is the site and, and what are the overarching requirements regarding standards and things like that. So if we look at it in terms of that classification, um, NBS content is arranged in two classifications. The first one is common arrangement of work sections. Uh, and the second one, which we'll talk about in a little while, is, is Uniclass 2015. This is what it would look like in uh, common arrangement. So preliminaries are A sections, and they may be done by the quantity surveyor. The specification parts, uh, uh, some of it may be done by an architect, and some of it may be done, for example, with services by an engineer. And that, and that would be what it would look like in, in, uh, in common arrangement. And we can see that if, if we do the same thing in Uniclass 2015, uh, there isn't an enormous amount of change in, in the way that things are done. The, the, the way that the, the change manifests itself is in terms of the classification. So preliminaries in Uniclass 2015 are called PM as opposed to A sections in common arrangement. And the specification is divided up into systems and products rather than, than uh, work sections. But the important thing with all of this is, is collaboration. So uh, there are some things which appear in the prelims which directly affect things which happen in the work section. So in this example, uh, we have some definitions of what is meant by yeah, various terms which are used in the work sections. They're contained within the preliminaries, uh, but they're used in the work section. So contractors, choice contractor design, submit proposals are shown up in the work sections, but the definitions are in the preliminaries. So just taking a bit more of a look at uh, common arrangement, common arrangement is divided into, uh, when it comes to preliminaries, is divided into five main sections. So there's section A1, which covers uh, descriptions of the work and the, and the documents. Uh, section A2, which is the contract. A3, which is called employer's requirements. A4, contractors, general cost items, and A5, which is, is uh, uh, a home for, for some of the, the uh, more eclectic things. So work on behalf of the, the employer or statutory undertakers, provisional sums, day works, advanced procurement. Uh, specifically looking at the scope of section A20, which is the contract, uh, common arrangement actually has a scope and document which says uh, these are the things which are included in A20, uh, and those are the things which are excluded. So, so uh, generally speaking, it's a list of all the contract um, conditions, uh, 
and things which are not excluded are the things which are already uh, included in, in the other sections from May 30 through to May 37. It's important perhaps to note at this point that the NBS preliminaries don't include the actual contract documents themselves. It's a template that shows you what the contract will be and how it's going to be filled in. Uh, we do specific sets of preliminaries for a, a wide range of building contracts. Uh, that's just some of them there on, on, a, on a slide. Uh, and if you open up NBS Corus, you will be able to select from the drop down menu the, uh, the relevant contract set that you want to use. And then this is a representation of what the contract says, uh, and that's what it'll look like in NBS Corus. Uniclass 2015 as a classification is slightly different to common arrangement. Common arrangement is a, a, a trade based classification, so it, it uh, it classifies things by, uh, to a certain extent, the person that does them. Um, Uniclass 2015 is an object-based classification, so it classifies things by what they are. And the way that the preliminaries are laid out within that classification is that they tend to be more aligned to the project timeline rather than an individual requirement. So again, looking at the, the prelims classification, some of the things are, are very similar to what you'll find in, in common arrangement. We have uh, bits about project information and site and ground information. Uh, we also have uh, performance requirements. We have design and approvals, design and approvals information uh, and financial and commercial information. PM55 in the Uniclass uh, 2015 classification is broadly equivalent to the A20 section that we've just looked at in uh, common arrangement. Uh, and uh, finally, we have um, PM16, PM70, uh, and, uh, and they're to do with uh, completion work and, and work on site. And there's a, a, an extra one in, uh, in Uniclass 2015 because they separated out all the roles that are associated with the project. So looking again at, uh, at the content in Uniclass 2015, uh, again, we, we, if we compare it with what we have in, uh, in Common Arrangement, that's what a clause looks like in um, A32 in common arrangement. And that's what the same clause looks like in PM60. So the information is the same in, in many cases, it's just classified separately. So finally, in summary, just some things to take away. Uh, preliminaries plus work sections equals specification. So, so preliminaries and work sections are both part of the same thing. It's an overall specification. Uh, NBS preliminaries are structured by common arrangement or by Uniclass 2015. Uh, some of the sections apply universally to all contracts and others are contract specific. Uh, NBS content is maintained and, it, and there's lots and lots of guidance. Crucially, the guidance tells you about how to fill in NBS, but also why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, and finally, NBS is authored for use with 55 different standard form contracts. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Roland. And uh, now we're, what we're going to do is switch across to MBS uh, Chorus and show the prelims content in the context of the, the Chorus platform. So what we can see here is uh, MBS Chorus, and this is a, a web platform, so you can access it off your PC, Mac, if you're on like site doing inspections, uh, you can even sort of access Chorus over sort of 3G, 4G connection and just get it on your sort of tablet or your, your iPhone. And it works just as well on sort of any of those platforms. And you can see I'm logged in here to the, the MBS organization. In top right, there's a little picture of myself sort of logged in as, as Stephen using so one of my licenses, don't have to install any software. And you can get access to the projects that, that you're working on across your practice. So if I jump into this project here, and you can see you can put a few project details in, but it's all about creating uh, specifications. Uh, and prelims being sort of one, one type of specification. So I'm gonna click to add one, and we'll have a look, uh, just like Bullen did in his presentation, the cause content first. So I'll call it cause prelims demo, and we'll just jump down to the UK uh, preliminaries libraries structured by the common arrangement of work sections. 
So then you get an immediate question here saying uh, which building contract would you like to use in terms of the, the terminology and the, the equivalent clauses and the prelims. And I'm going to come down here and just choose the, the JCT intermediate building contract with portion to contract to design. And at this point, it's going to go across to the MBS uh, content library and pull all of those template work sections across, uh, ready for you to make those project specific. So it's creating the specification. And you can see there that it's added all of those sections to the job. So from A10 project particulars, all the way down there to the sort of A, A50s. And let's just open one of these. Let's look at A30. And you can see that as, as I open that, you get a set of pre-authored uh, clauses in the center of the screen in the editor. And on the right hand side, you get uh, contextual guidance and links to things like standards and industry publications. And you can go down these clauses now and you can cross out uh, clauses that aren't relevant. You just click the P button and that removes it uh, from the, the job. And you can go to the clauses that are relevant and uh, just, just come in and fill in the blanks. So I come in here and uh, do free text. And where you see these little drop down arrows, you can click the drop down arrows, read the guidance on the right hand side and pick the, the value that's right for, for your project. If you'd like to add more content to the MBS clause, uh, you can come and click the three dots and insert items below and above. So for example, here, put a, a row below here. And whatever, you can write uh, the content that's that's right for your job. And if you don't like any of the MBS content or it's not relevant, you can always uh, remove that and also bring that back uh, as well. If we just have a little glance here at the, the A20 section, you'll see a sort of subtle difference is the sort of main sections from MBS all are, are numbered with MBS clause numbers for you to cross-reference. The A20s are numbered by the equivalent clause numbers in the building contract. So if you look at A20 here, that's just uh, loading on the screen. You don't have those numbers like 110, 120, 130, but in the title themselves, it'll say things like the, the first recital, second recital, third, which is the language used in that particular uh, building contract that you're writing the prelims for. It's worth just mentioning this clause. Sometimes you'll have an alternative clause where the first clause is in the job, but when you read the guidance, you see there's two options here. You can go for the, the, the A or the B option. And you can also cross out this if this one's not right and sort of pull in the alternative clause as well. So demonstrating there how you can quickly pull together that set of prelims and then edit it to, to make it right for your project. And the last thing in terms of the basic workflow is then publishing that as a, a PDF. So you can come and uh, click the actions button here and publish the entire set of prelims or you can publish just parts of it uh, if you wish to sort of maybe send bits out uh, to different project team members at different times. So for example, here, I'm gonna publish the A20 in the A30 section. So you click actions and uh, publish, and you go through a little wizard here. So I'm gonna choose PDF. We'll come back to this in a moment, but you can compare and show revisions. It's one of our core's uh, pro features. And then you can put information on which can be displayed in the headers and the footer and the document control sheet. So I'm going to record this, save a copy of it, uh, and then uh, come and give it a give it a number, give it a status. I mean, free text these. I'm, I'm using values I've used uh, before. Revision number. Maybe see see who it. And I quite like giving the using the same number as the sort of name of the PDF as well, which ultimately would be okay, emailed to another team member or maybe uh, pop on an extra net or a common data environment. Final stage, uh, we just do the, the basic NBS uh, style sheets. And that's going to publish a professional looking set of prelims 
that's got the base MBS templates in that you've configured to make right for your project. So it takes a few seconds. And we've got a little PDF now at the bottom. Bit of information on the cover page, a table of contents with sort of hyperlinks to go down the down the document. I might imagine a contractor receiving this as a as, as a PDF. And in the A20 section there, you've got the numbers that align with the contract. And in the A30 section, you've got the MBS uh, numbers, and you can see the the modifications that are made. I removed one clause and added some content to this clause. And that's the sort of set. Uh, so a bit of a sort of workflow showing all of that sort of basic functionality on how to produce robust uh, prelims on construction projects. I'd like to now show some of the collaboration features. So imagine I'm the quantity surveyor that's in charge of putting the prelims together, but I want to work with uh, my, my, my project team members, maybe the architect, the engineer, the cost consultant at a project level and come back here and you can invite other people to the job. They may be your colleagues who are going to sort of kind of cross check what you're putting together, or they may be people from other organizations that you want to come in and uh, comment on the, on the live uh, prelims as opposed to continuing to send PDFs back and forward. So you can see here I've invited uh, Kate Brown, who maybe pretends the, the architect on this project. And what Kate Brown can do if I just come to a different version of uh, Google Chrome here, she's here a different organization, MBS Technical Solutions, rather than the MBS. And she can toggle now between her project, uh, projects for, for her company and change organization because she's been invited into the projects with the MBS company. So she's going to toggle there, she'll see different projects she's got access to now all controlled through the access control uh, features. And she can see there the, let's just look at what this one's called. Cause prelims demo. So there's the cause uh, prelims demo. And she can come in here and see that same content. So what Kate's gonna come in here is going to A10. And she's just going to pop a little note in. And these notes are similar to how you add comments to Microsoft Word or add uh, comments inside of an Adobe document or what have you. But at the point where that's been added as a note, if I jump back to, to, to Stephen logged in at the MBS organization, you can see that now there's a spec note here. And Stephen goes to the spec notes, you get a big list of all of the different uh, comments that have been put in as the set prelims have been developed. You can click that hyperlink and jump exactly to the right place, see what Kate's written. That's currently locked out because Kate's working on it. But I'm going uh, put a little note in as Stephen and jump back across to Kate one last uh, time here in this example. As Kate makes the changes to this clause and click save, that goes up to the cloud and pushes back down uh, into Stephen's uh, version, of course, completely different organizations. It could be in different parts of the world. And that would push up from, from one computer into the cloud and then back down onto the other. As Kate leaves A10 and comes into A11, you'll see in the background that the the clause on Stephen's machine gets freed up so that Stephen can and now sort of come and work on that again. This is a nice little touch at the top here. You get the, the three dots that appear. If you click here, you can actually see who was the last person to work, not just on the clause itself, but on the individual rows inside the, the clause. So when I click save here, you can see uh, Stephen. Stephen was the person that uh, made changes to here, and Kate was the person that made changes to the other sort of clause item. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a set of prelims using the Uniclass uh, 2015 content set. So drop down here, 
UK Uniclass 2015 prelims. And we choose exactly the same contract. So JCT and immediate with contracted design. And when I click save here, just like before, it's going to go to the MBS, the content library, and pull all of the relevant sections across so that I can put together a set of project uh, specific prelims uh, using the, the JCT and immediate contract design content. So again, imagine I'm the quantity surveyor and I'm working on a number of these sections, but for example, my project colleague, Kate, might be doing the overall project performance requirements and the design and approval information in her version of Chorus. So I'm going to remove those from the quantity surveyor area and jump back across uh, to where uh, Kate is logged in. So what I'm going to do here is go back to, to Kate's sort of parent organization. So back to MBS Technical Solutions. And what you'll see here is Kate's working on PM35 and PM40. So they've decided at the project team meeting that they're going to split the, 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 the prelims writing duty between uh, the two practices. So you've got in the NBS organization, the, the, the main parts of the prelims, whereas in the architects organization here, that you've got responsibility for PM35 and PM40. When Kate's happy that she's, she's produced these and they're ready to sort of go into that main set of prelims, you can select both of those sections, click Control C, that's going to copy those two sections to the clipboard. And then what Kate can do now is change organizations and jump from maybe the architect's practice across to the, to the quantity surveyors uh, organization and just paste those sections straight uh, in there. So I come back to the NBS headquarters. I might have to refresh, refresh this just to see the, the newly created uh, set of prelims.